like I said. So we're going to look through a few things to start. Direction, initial and terminal points, look at magnitude, and look at component form. So the more interesting these questions are, it's not really the nitty gritty that we'll start with, which is just kind of the terminology um, and how to write them and express them and talk about them. But really, it's the word problems that become really interesting and kind of fun. So those are um, problems about current, wind speed, travel, that kind of thing, and how, th how these different outside forces throw you off course, and how that affects um, your speed and your direction, and that kind of thing. So those are, those are really interesting problems. Um, as I've mentioned in, in the last couple weeks, looking at vectors in the matrix unit has some application. However, it, it's a little bit more, um, I would say, closely aligned with trig concepts which we'll get more into in the spring, okay? So, if I have a little vector here, just to kind of get the notation underway, um, and we want to talk about, uh, I can label my point here A and my point there B. If I want to look at vector A, uh, perhaps from physics you know this already, do you know what the little symbol is atop the, uh, the letter that you want to use? Have you seen that before? Maybe not, getting a lot of blank stares, that's okay. <laughs> so vector A would be written like that, okay? So it's a little, almost like a half arrow, okay? Um, you may also refer to it by its points. So if this is vector AB, we can also look at that like this, vector AB, okay? And what does a vector tell us? Why do we care about vectors? Direction. Direction, excellent, what else? Magnitude. Magnitude, those are the two key words. Okay, so vectors, we look at direction and magnitude. So hold on to those thoughts. Um, with direction, we'll get more specific through the problems that we do, but you can imagine um, what kinds of words might we use with direction in vectors. Up, down, left, right. Up, down, left, right, and, and get more specific. Yeah, north, south, east, west. So that whole concept, right? And think about how nicely that fits with a coordinate plane, right? So north, south, east, west, we will use as our uh, compass to look at direction of vectors. Now, initial and terminal points, not rocket science here, but my initial point in this case would be A. So this is our initial point. And my terminal point here, B, allows us to see what direction this is headed in. So the terminal point, uh, if, you, if you read the vector from initial to terminal point, the terminal point being the arrow at the end, uh, that will get us which direction this thing is headed. That would be very different if I'm going this direction, if I read it the opposite way and going this direction. Okay, so uh, that is important to recognize our starting and ending points there. Okay. All right, magnitude. Go ahead, Zoe. So the terminal point isn't like where it ends, it's just so you know which direction it is. It, it can serve as both functions, actually, so a really good question. So uh, as we look to the terminal point, we're actually going to have a point in most cases. However, if you're talking about direction, uh, you might think of it as, you know, you keep going in that direction if you're traveling. But if you're trying to look at a, a point in time, so to speak, um, and then we can look at a specific terminal point, which will help us determine direction and magnitude, ultimately. Okay? Great. Okay, so for magnitude, there's a little bit of notation there, too. If I'm trying to figure out um, the, the magnitude or how big or strong or fast something is going, then I would use what looks to be absolute value bars, like that. And that would be read as the magnitude magnitude of vector A, okay? And again, you can have the AB with the little vector symbol above it as well, okay? So these little um, bars here serve a lot of different functions as we look at all these different concepts here. Hannah? Yeah. So, like, what does that tell us, though? Like, literally just that that is what the magnitude is. Like, what is magnitude? So magnitude tells you, in, in a lot of cases, if we're talking about travel, it'll tell you how fast something is going um, or how strong something is, a current, for instance, or a wind speed, for instance, things like that. So you'll see in a couple examples exactly what we're talking about, and hopefully that makes more sense, okay? 
All right, good so far, just a bit of notation. Um, all right, so let's get into um, a, a little bit of a problem. vector problem here. A plane is traveling due north, but a wind blowing due east pushes it off course. So at 1 p.m., the plane is at point A. Here's A here, coordinates of 10, 10. And at 2 p.m., the plane is at C, which had the coordinates of 100 and 410. Okay? We're looking to find the wind speed and the speed of the plane. So the, the speed of the plane without the wind incorporated, if there was if it was in operating in a vacuum, right, what would the wind speed be? So here are my two initial point, terminal point, or point in time, we could call it in this case. And I'm trying to find those those little pieces. How would we do that? Alexis? Would you center at the origin first? Uh, you could center it at the origin, sure. And then what? How do we get, what do you think? Do you want to expand on that? Yeah, and then like the, well, at the origin, then the x-axis, like you see how far out it goes. That's the direction of the wind. And then use that. <laughs> I guess maybe the slope, you would start there, times b. Good, okay, so you're coming up with a couple things that are going to help us along quite a bit. Um, I could center it at origin, okay? So imagine I have a set of axes here, and this is zero, zero, okay? All right, um, so if I were to, what, so you mentioned slope. When you talk about or think about slope, uh, what's critical, what do you mean? Um, <laughs> two points. You need two points, right, okay. Where did this plane start from and which direction is it going? It started from zero to zero. We could say that, yep, we measured it, it at a time at 1 p.m., which is fine. Um, but which direction is it going? It's going north, right? So on it, straight up, right? Okay, good. So think about that for a moment. If there were no wind, that plane would be traveling straight north, right? Which way is the wind going? That way. East. East, this way, right. So if you think about this here, okay? Uh, yes, a triangle. Our favorite line, too, right? The right triangle. All right, so now that we can look at it here, we have these two points in time. We know that this is the direction of the plane traveling, and this is the direction of the wind, and that's what's knocked us off course, right? 9400. 9400, awesome. So what, what are you calculating there, Hannah? Uh, I just got the legs. The legs, good. So uh, if we look at the legs here, um, our 90 is going to be here, and our 400 is there, and you calculated that how? Just Basically, subtracted. <laughs> Straight out subtraction, right? Yeah. Change in x, change in y, which is similar to your thought earlier on slope. Go ahead, Alexis. Would like that line be the average of the two? That's a distance. Ah, interesting. This will represent maybe not distance, but in, historically we've thought of it as distance, right? But in a vector type of problem, what might oh, this represent? It's going to be the miles gone in an hour. So Excellent. Miles in an hour, miles per hour, speed, awesome. And then that case is going to represent magnitude. Um, but you're, you're ahead of the game. We're going to get right back there in a second. But let's think about this here. If I'm trying to answer the question, find the speed of the wind and the speed of the plane, that's just the engine speed without the wind, what would my answers be? You have it. 400 for the what? Speed of the normal thing. Yeah. Yes, good. Okay, so the plane would be... 400 miles per hour, and our wind, therefore, would be 90 miles per hour, okay? These are often referred to as components. Those are the two components that are making up my vector and are determining um, the direction and the magnitude. Go ahead, Anna. So then if it asked for the combined speed, uh, would you do components? Yes, then that's what we're going to do in the next slide. So, oh, sorry. No, no, no worries. I love when you segue into the next part. That's perfect. Good. Okay. So, any questions on this little piece so far? Um, again, just looking at those components. And in a moment, uh, a pro couple problems ahead. We're going to look at um, this a little bit in reverse. Okay. And I'll need more in a moment. Okay. So we've got the speed, um, and here we are. And you guys have. 
already thought about, I'm going to erase all this, um, you thought about the question about the, the magnitude and the direction, okay? So if we have 90 here and 400 here, okay? And we want to know now what direction is the plane traveling and how fast is it moving with respect to the ground? What is with respect to the ground? Uh, just from ground speed, just speed in general. Yeah, good question. All right, how fast? What do you? Where, how are we gonna do this? You kind of hit it on it already, Georgia. Uh, you can use a curve of the curve of two squares on the Good. So we're gonna look at the magnitude here, which will be the square root of 90 squared plus 400 squared. Who's got a calculator ready? Question first. No, do you have it already? Yeah, please. Is it uh, exactly or yeah, exactly? Exactly. exactly. Ain't that weird? <laughs> it's unusual, isn't it? Okay, so that is 410 miles per hour. Now, does that make sense to you? Probably. Yes. How come? Like, why is that 410? They probably just did it so it would be easier. They could be, yeah, so easy okay. numbers to work with. To because it's a miracle. <laughs> Um, won't always come out so nicely, and that's fine. We'll just, it, it's an estimate, or we round the answer. But does, why would 410 make sense to you? So Zoe? Be because it's longer than the plane would have um, traveled normally, because there's more force applied to it and just in another way. That's right. Exactly. Um, how many of you have flown east or west in your lives before? So, you know, even to the Midwest or West Coast or over to Europe, that way. Um, have you heard the words tailspeed and headwind? Tailwind and headwind, right? So, uh, Caroline, maybe a question for you. Typically, when you fly home, where do you fly? Like, when you go to Alaska. Where do we stop? Or where yeah, so you probably leave from Logan or Providence? I'd go from Logan and then go to Seattle. Great, perfect example. When you fly from Logan to Seattle, versus Seattle to Logan, which is usually faster? Well, I know one's faster, I can't remember which. It's, um, it, I don't know. That's okay. Um, anyone have a sense of that? Like if you fly west to east versus east to west, what's typically quicker, Zoe? I'm not sure which one is quicker. Does that have to do with like the earth turning and then that goes that way? I don't know which way the earth turns. East. Yeah. Which West to east time? is typically faster. Anna, is that what you were going to say? Yeah, because when I fly at home versus when I fly here, it's like the time is different. It is. And have you ever wondered why? You, conceptually, you may know that, but you'll often hear the pilot on the plane say something like, we have a massive headwind coming, oh, and therefore it's going to take you know, two hours and 40 minutes instead of two hours and 10 minutes. But typically speaking, with our... Um, the way that our weather patterns go, that typically patterns come from west to east. So often the wind is, is moving in that direction. So when you fly out to say California or Seattle um, or Chicago, then you're often flying into a wind and it takes longer. But when you're playing, and your engine speed's the same though. So that's the concept that I, and Zoe, you answered it really nicely about how, well, the wind's kind of taking you a little faster. You have your engine speed and then the wind, that component of the wind that's affecting you there. Okay, Alexis. And so I guess continuing your question. So does that mean that the line that we're looking at, the solid one, is the average of the two directions? Uh, it's not average, I would say. You're you're you are calculating um, distance. You're really using like a distance formula, but you are looking at at um, speed, right? As far as what that calculation means in this case. Um, so good, Zoe. For that direction that the plane is traveling, it wouldn't be enough to say like north. East, what do we like do an angle? Oh, fantastic! Yes, that's wonderful. Um, a hundred percent correct. So, how do we do that? What would you do? Uh, fine. Yeah. It's the reverse thing. Is the inverse. Is the inverse, inverse. Yeah. tangent. Caroline said tangent. You guys said inverse. You guys are correct. Okay, so let me put a theta there to make it official. Okay, <laughs> and so. We are going to calculate the, tan the inverse tangent of that angle. So let's go ahead and look at that. That's going to get us our direction. So the inverse tangent of... I actually, I learned how to do this on my calculator. Awesome. 
90 over 400. 12.68 degrees. 12.68 degrees all around to 12.7 degrees. Okay. Now, we have to assign some meaning to that because I could tell you, oh, the plane is traveling 12.7 degrees. And you might be like, what's that mean? So how do we refer to the, Zoe, do you want to carry your thought from earlier? What do you think, how would I offer that as an answer? Um, uh, like 12.7 from the north, I guess? I yes, good, you're almost there, Caroline. Oh, I think it's like 12.7 degrees can be. Right, well, I'm going to phrase it slightly differently, but you guys are, you, you pretty much have it. Hannah, it would be 12.7 degrees east from due north. Yes, east, good, excellent. So 12.7 degrees east, east of north would be a way to refer to it. <laughs> now, so that's not to say that we can't, we can't talk about this in, a, in a, a different way. So I could have used, you know, if I want to think about it as this angle, I'll call it beta for now. If I wanted to refer to that angle instead, okay, that how would I, what might I say as far as the plane's direction here? From east, or north of east. Yeah, good. So just keep track of where you are and where you're referencing, um, whether it's north, south, east, or west. And so therefore, sometimes you might have a different answer, but it has the same meaning when it comes to direction, okay? All right, awesome. Questions so far?